Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to Science Isn't Scary. I'm Miss Lisa. We're here today at the Fayette County Public Library. Now, you know, if you've been watching me for a year, we've done some really cool things here on this show. We've talked about the science of sound. We've talked about birds and their adaptations and some of the nests that they um, that they make. We've also talked about some chemical things that have exploded on us. We've talked about magnets and how they repel and attract such cool science. Today, though, I'm going to be talking to you about a science that's not a wow science, but a hmm, that's very interesting type of science. Now, if you are interested in what I'm talking about, you can go online and get some kits. So we're going to be talking about some fingerprinting and some handwriting analysis. This is sort of a crime scene investigation science today. So let's first of all talk about our fingerprints. Now our fingerprints are very unique. Okay, Each of you have 10 fingers and they have different fingerprints on each of them. In fact, these are so unique um, that you are born with them. And no matter how old you are, whether you are two or you're 92, your fingerprints are the same the whole entire life that you have. And so this is why detectives and police have gotten smart and have started a database of fingerprints, because if they are left behind in a crime scene, then they can figure out who did the crime. Now, your fingerprints are not just here for decoration. They are little ridges on your fingertips that are actually used to help you grip things. So that's really a pretty cool thing, too. Now, your fingerprints, um, there are three main types. Okay, so you have the whirl that sort of just whirls around and around and around and around. You have the arch that makes like the little mountain loop, um, the mountain little top there. And you have more of a like an oval loop. Now, to figure out what kind of fingerprints you have at home, or for, uh, you have, you can do this at home. You just need to have an ink pad. Make sure you have ink, okay, to keep it um, nice and wet. Now, you don't want to have the ink like totally brand new. You won't want to smother your finger. You can see I've already done it today. But if you want to press your finger down in the ink and then have a clean sheet of paper somewhere, press your thumb and roll it a little bit, you'll be able to get a really good clean fingerprint. Now, I think mine, since I'm using my magnifying glass, I can see that I have this whirl type. Now, you might want to go ahead and do all your fingers because some of them are all different. Not everybody all has whirls. Um, you might have a couple whirls, you might have a loop and an arch. That's why it's so important for detectives when they are fingerprinting that they do all of the fingers because they're not always all the same. Isn't that cool? All right, so now let's say we have a crime scene. I know that you have seen on detective um, stories and on movies where the detectives go in and they lift fingerprints off of glass or other objects within a room. I know you have seen windows and glass where kids have put their fingerprints up all over the place and you can't see through and this is why mom comes by and washes your windows right because those fingerprints are everywhere. So I want to show you a little bit of what they do. So here's a glass um, and we're going to see if we can lift one of my fingerprints off this glass. Now it being winter, I'm very dry and so I am going to rub just a tiny bit of oil on my finger here, on my thumb, and then I'm going to press it into this glass. Okay, and so we're gonna pretend that the you know detectives have come by and said, hmm, I think there's a there's a fingerprint on here. Now the the detectives are going to have this dusting powder. And you can get this in these kits that you can pick, um, you know, you buy off the internet. Now ooh, I wonder where I put it. I don't quite see it. Where did it go? So we're going to use the dusting powder, and that's quite a bit. And we have a little thing here that's going to help get the get it off. You can start to see where my fingerprint is, which is pretty cool. Now you're going to want some tape, or in the case of buying these kits, you're going to get these little round circles that are going to be able to be laid on top of the fingerprint. This is a little tricky. I don't know that I got it quite right. 
If you're going to be a detective, you'll go to school to learn how to do all this. Then you're going to lift that up, and then you would be able to lay it down somewhere and actually see the fingerprint. That's a little bit too smudgy. I think I put a little bit too much dusting powder on it, but you get the idea. And it's really cool and really fun if you want to go home and practice this and see if you can be a detective. And maybe you could fingerprint your family and then have them put fingerprints on different things and you could figure out who touched what. That might be really cool. Now, another thing that detectives use is handwriting analysis. Now, if you have a piece of paper nearby, grab a pencil. I want you to write this sentence down. I want you to write, I have to look at it, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Okay, write that sentence down. Now, the reason detectives use this sentence is because it uses every single letter of the alphabet. And so when there is a note left behind, like a ransom note or another note left somewhere on a crime scene, they can maybe, if it's in their database, figure out who wrote the note. So let's take a quick look at these. These are five different people that work here in the library. Most of the time, um, detectives will look at the loop letters. So look at the Q. This one loops. This one does not. Look at that one. That one comes up with a quick point. Loop and it doesn't do anything there. The K is interesting. If you look at the different ways that people write their K, that looks like an uppercase. And then look at that one, interesting. If you keep going, the J's is a loop letter, but if you notice, everybody here made their J's the same. Um, let's just keep looking. The the's are interesting. So this one put the TH together without the E. This one made the T crooked. This one's all spaced out, all spaced out. And look at this one, it's all written together. Hmm, very interesting. Y's, straight down, straight down, straight down. This one curves, this one loops. Very interesting. The G, here's a loop. Here's just a curve and a curve and a curve and another loop. So by looking at these, you could analyze who wrote what. And so I had one of my coworkers write a note. Here's the note. I went to the lake. See you later. All right. So by looking at that and looking at the different things we talked about, can you tell which of the people here in the library, A, B, C, D, or E, wrote that note? If you're looking at it carefully, you'll see a couple of things that I pointed out. Do you see how the word the here is all written together? Do you see this weird K? That was unlike most of our, of our other samples. The Y is a loop. Okay, you have capital L, that might be important. So let's look again. Who wrote the the that was all connected and who had that funky K? Not connected, not connected, not connected, not connected. Oh, here's the one that's connected. Now, did they write the fancy K? Yes, they did. So, person E wrote that note. There's no doubt about it. By looking at the handwriting, you can tell um, who did it. So, pretty fascinating. All right, boys and girls, like I said, this is a Hmm, this is really fascinating and interesting type of science. Not all science is lots of noises and kabooms. Um, you know, although those, those kind of sciences are really cool too. But so are these. All right, boys and girls, I hope you've um, learned something new today. I hope you will join me again next month as we look into another science concept. Thanks for watching. Bye now.